What's up, everybody? It's your favorite, yet another prize, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at, it's like Machine Mecha 1. It's like the Bumblebee Prime, but this one transforms. This is on loan to me from Jordan W. He actually met up with me in a Best Buy parking lot, not shady at all, and handed this off to me in person, so I appreciate his efforts. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about this guy. We're gonna go through the transformation, which I am very scared of, just because of how well the engineering components are hidden, and we're gonna have some final thoughts and so forth. But first, we're gonna talk about accessories. He comes with a couple extra hand options. We have two outreaching hands, two two finger pointing hands, and two uh, trigger finger hands. That's in addition to the two fist hands that you saw in the opening footage. They're all decoed the same, which we'll talk about when we get to the figure. He also comes with a display base, which is quite nice. You know, silver, detailed out the wazoo. Um, no like backstand or anything, so you can't like get any jumping poses necessarily, but uh, all the same, it does look good. Simple, yet intricate. Now, if you were an astute viewer, you would have seen that he has the curved smokestacks in the opening footage, um, and obviously you don't want that for the truck mode, so he comes with two replaceable or swap out smokestacks for the truck mode. They're detailed the same. And that's simply done by just pulling out of your regular smokestacks and placing the uh, straight ones in. He comes with his uh, rifle, Painted silver, it's actually like a gun metal, and then dry brush silver over top. Sculpt is nice. He can hold it, but I'm having a hard time getting the trigger finger uh, around the trigger guard. As you can see, some paint has flicked off while I've tried. I'm gonna stop here, uh, stop while I'm ahead so I don't cause any more damage to this. Um, I would imagine that you can get it to work, but just use caution. He also has a uh, light up feature on his eyes gimmicks wise so uh the batteries have already been installed which is why we're able to do it but there it is and we'll get in tight on the head skull for dennis so eyes look a little dead in the current spot we have a double ball peg from the head into the neck um which is not really covered all that elegantly to be honest the paint is fantastic we have blue paint with uh silver dry brush weathering on top along with silver accents silver paint on the face silver paint on the eye piece but it looks like a wash added to it as well the double ball peg is the head up to there down to there swivel confused prime look so all of that works brilliantly we'll back the camera out of taste to take a look at the arms and such for the shoulder we have a universal joint here. The shoulder pad itself is on a double hinge, so that can get up and out of the way, and then you can kind of adjust it back to make it work, which is really well done. The shoulder pad deco-wise, we have the white paint with the kind of black weathering added on, uh, silver dry brushing for weathering on the red. The red itself is painted, the silver is painted, so kind of no stone unturned. You have a swivel around where the universal joint meets up with the chest, and you also have a butterfly joint on a hinge there. So pretty well done. Bicep swivel. The, uh, the bicep themselves are fully painted silver. We have... I think it's a te technically a double joint, but I can't get this other joint to move. But at the very minimum, it's a single joint. I think it might just be a single hinge for the elbow that gets you 90 degrees. Once again, the red paint, silver accents. Same on the other side. The wrist hinge in and out. They're on a ball peg, so you get a little bit of up down, a little bit of in out, and the swivel. <clears throat> Same thing on the other side. Also, we got this little yellow paint accent there too, which is nice. Waist, swivel, and ab crunch, which is crazy. Um, detailings wise we have translucent plastic on the chest which is fine because it's a really dark tinted uh, plastic and then we have same red with the silver dry brushing silver accents on the board same for the back which we'll look at here at the end we have the hip skirts they'll get up and out of the way on double hinges it might be a ball peg and a double hinge or a double ball peg to be honest but I can't really tell the side skirts are on double hinges. We have, I can go ahead and back out now, taste. The hips that are on universals for the full Van Dam. Forward and back for almost the full Monty, but pretty impressive either way. Blue paint on the pelvis with silver dry brush for the weathering. We have um, silver paint. And, uh oh, silver and gold, along with the gunmetal paint down there. 
and we have a thigh swivel just tons of detailing sculpt work etc we have a double hinge knee um could have probably used a ratchet in those knees but they are there tires look good silver uh actually it's like a gunmetal with silver dry brushing down here silver dry brushing on the blue for weathering ankles you get an ankle tilt up slight down and a rocker and there he is from the back um it's it's pretty incredible um all things considered size comparison wise i don't really have anything really appropriate but there he is next to starlene and uh x trans bots hoist so i mean big bots you know this the seekers are pretty big give you some sort of an idea hopefully would probably fill up a detail pretty nicely so to speak so let's get him transformed spin to waist 180 you got to come down here and you had to free up <clears throat> this middle section of his nether regions bring out the hip skirts rotate this whole panel down and then rotate the hip skirts open this chest up and that will allow you to pop up like this collarbone area on the back you can take these pieces and bring them down this piece here comes up and this piece comes down actually this piece comes up as well disconnect these flank pieces and then kind of untab these sort of uh, rib sections and that will allow you to take this rotate it down and then oh that's on a ball peg we'll fix that here in a minute this grabs into there take these pieces rotate them down try your best to keep your eye on these flank pieces um, as you do so spin this around until the tire sits where it's supposed to and then there's a circle peg there that will tab back in so same thing we're gonna rotate this down we're gonna spin this keep track of your piece there and then connect now we need to get this piece free so primes like collarbone area will slide up that will allow you to move this out as you do so there's a series of flaps that need to be flipped so bring them around tuck these in bring out your final ones here I know my hand had just got in the way and then as you rotate this piece down there's a tab on each side that will connect to the gray piece um, that holds the wheels so one and I'm trying to to show you here and that's where it is right there I just need to get it to connect there now you got to get this head uh, up and underneath so spin it around you might have to bend this a little bit out of place to get it to go and then straighten that out flip this piece over and get your uh, <clears throat> windshield here sorted and you can tuck these two pieces completely underneath now we're gonna get these arms tucked in so bring this around to the back bring this down rotate this inward bring this up you want to rotate at the forearm so and then tuck the fist in as far as it'll go so that when you go to tuck this in it will kind of sit like this but what we need to do is 
collapse that first and that will allow us to kind of tuck the whole arm in uh, very very g1 you know what i mean uh, which is cool on the other side we're going to do the same exact thing again we're going to bring this around we're going to sort this arm out so make sure that the forearm is swiveled um, so that the kind of gray of the elbow joint matches this gray stripe and then take the fist tuck it as far in as it will go as you bring this around to the back bend at that part of the universal rotate collapse and tuck in uh, just uh, I got this piece all messed up there but that's what you're looking for there's a lot to these shoulder bits so if you release this piece this piece will swing down on a double hinge you can also slide that red piece down to be in line there is a panel on this side that needs to swing out. Then this piece needs to swing down. And this needs to come down. And I think... Uh, Thought it grabbed on, maybe it doesn't. Once you have it somewhat like this, I don't know if I had that quite right. Take this up, take this flap here, spin that around. And then this will come and sit behind it. So we're gonna do that a second time. Release the smokestack, bring this down slide this little red piece behind it so that it lines up there is a small flap here that needs to spin out and then this piece will flip over and your shoulder pad will come down this comes over and then this piece flips around slides up and in and then this rocks on the double hinge to sit behind it and then our last steps up here for now is to take this piece sort of sit that in there and i'll clean all that up here in a minute take this piece bring this up basically every flap that's got a flip just flip it but we're not gonna connect it quite yet. We just gotta get it around. There's a lot of tension there, so be careful. Like I said, we're not connecting it, we're just sort of getting it ready. Same on this side. Not the best tolerance clearance wise, but it will go. There we go. Then the legs. You want to bring this piece out, open up all of this, then rotate this entire piece up. And I guess you kind of want it to be kind of like this. Then rotate the foot collapse that into that void space there and then bring this around and your kind of brake lights and, and turn signal will tab into this slot there and we're going to do the same on this side as well so we're going to release this panel we're going to swing it out we're going to unfurl all of this stuff We're gonna swing this up and over.
We're gonna take the ankle, rotate it 90 in, fold it up and away, take this piece, swing it back, and tab it into the bottom of where the feet were. We're supposed to just bring the legs together and there's a series of tabs that we just gotta get lined up right. There we go. Now I'll work on that. The feet are actually magnetized, which is cool and interesting, but there it is. Now on the underside, I, uh, I don't have these quite lined up, but in a perfect world, that thing is supposed to tab into the side of here. Mine are shifted too far down, but open this up. We're going to do the best we can. Bring the fuel tank out, spin it, sit it to the side, and then put that back down. So same on this side. Once again, they're not lined up quite right. Open that up, bring this out, spin it, sit it to the side, set that back down, tab it back in. And then on the bottom here, we're gonna take this whole section, we're gonna rotate it up, and we're gonna tab it back in, and then we're gonna take this piece and flip it over. So, rotate up on a double hinge, tab it back in, and then flip that piece over. And uh, like I said, this joint that slides down for the hips to get more articulation, I just have it misaligned at the moment, and that's why it's uh, causing grief. This should be a little bit further up, which would allow these to kind of sit in there more properly. Oh well. And now we just gotta get these sorted out. So, there's a series of tabs. There's one that goes inside of there, one that goes in there, one that goes in there, this goes in there, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, they're all over the place. Um, also, that slider joint has a tendency, you know, to slide up for transformation, so just try to get it the best you can. All right, here we go. Here goes nothing. I'm not gonna fight with this thing too long on camera. We'll see, we'll do the best we can. Let's see if we can't get it and then move on with our day. Uh, relatively effortless. Then this comes up, like I said, it's not lined up properly, but um, you know, in a perfect world, this would all tab in. But even as it is right now, you, you can barely tell. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, so same on this side. I'm gonna bring all this up. Couldn't go easy on both sides, could it? What fun would that be? There we go. right and then that comes up and your side mirrors come out I'm gonna fix these couple flaps if I can uh, I'll clean it up we'll take a look at it and there it is I don't quite have it this side lined up quite right there's something off there but it's gonna have to just be good enough cuz um you know there's a lot to it a lot of like stuff that has to be kind of aligned just right um, it will roll, it's not doing so great on my flat surface here, but it will roll. The paint comes through nicely. I love the kind of like brown wash that's on the white to give it a nice kind of weathered look. Um, you know, I don't have a quite, couple things quite lined up 100%, but you know, if you bought this, hopefully you can get you close enough where you can mess with it and sort of complete the look. Um, you know, a lot to it. And, but it is relatively successful. It looks the part. The paint deco and stuff still come through nicely. Smokestack swap is a nice touch. The kind of headlights, turn signals, brake lights on it all work well. And there it is next to Tiger Track. So, you know, sizable unit. I think it's pretty good. 
Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. I do think they should have used a softer plastic for the hand so that the fingers and stuff could be more easily positioned around the trigger guard and such. Small complaint, but it is one. I'm also not crazy about the use of the double ball peg from the head to the neck being just a blue joint, like a blue dumbbell. From certain angles, it's a slightly off-putting. On top of that, it's a pretty well-built figure, but I would have loved to have seen some ratchets utilized specifically in the knees and hips. And of course, when it comes to glowing eyes, we know that they can paint the eyes and have them glow. We've seen fans toys do it with the Mega Supreme. When you don't do it, it makes the figure look dead if you don't have the batteries working. There are an awful lot of panels and sort of moving joints and double hinges and double ball pegs that do have to be lined up just right in order to make the transformation successful, and that can prove to be a bit challenging. However, in the same breath, with as kind of intricate as it is, and me just sort of moving through it for the sake of review purposes and also trying to be gentle and not forcing things because it doesn't belong to me, it is impressive that I was able to get it kind of as close as I did did. As for the positives, I mean, the, the action figure engineering here, like the skeletal frame of this thing is amazing. It's extremely well done. On top of that, it's sculpted beautifully. On top of that, it's painted beautifully. So kind of all of the things that you need presentation wise are built in here. It's very, very, very well done in that regard. I like the hand options. I like the stand and the gun looks great. The materials are good and the build is solid. However, I do wish they had a few more ratchets. Even though the transformation is very involved, Involved, it is relatively smooth for all of the things it has to do. And I think that ultimately the alt mode looks good as well. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a transforming prime from the Bumblebee movie, this is probably the best one I've looked at overall, which is saying something. I'll be honest with you, it almost has G Creation vibes a little bit to me. But yeah, solid unit. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.